Hi, this video is going to be about the tongue control embouchure. So this is a an embouchure and a tonguing style for all wind players. That counts for woodwinds too. Uh, the only difference between uh, the brass and the woodwinds is with this tonguing style, the for brass the lip is the reed, and for woodwinds the reed is the reed. So that's the only difference. Um, with this tonguing style, your an embouchure style, your bottom lip helps your tongue and your bottom lip are together. It's kind of a unit, a unit, and um, just behind the tip of the tongue, tip goes against the reed, or in this for brass players, the top lip. So what this does is this takes pressure off of your lips. Um, it takes just about a month, you know, 21, 21 weeks or a month, or sorry, 21 days or a month to get used to this tonguing style uh, because your tongue has to build up strength to support the airstream. Normally it's kind of all on your lips, and oddly enough, the tongue is a much stronger muscle. Um, this is a much more efficient way of playing. Uh, it's comparable, instead of doing this every time you press a piano key, you just do this. Just press the key. Um, and the reason I say that, this is how most people tongue. Ta, ta, tongue's at the tip going, tip going to the top, ta, 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 lots of movement. With this tonguing style, that's my, that's all the movement that happens. Um, and especially for brass playing, this gives you much better compression right at the top of the tongue. So direct control of the airstream. Um, for the lower brass, it's, that's not going to quite look like that. You can see when I do my pedal tones, I'm playing really loud pedals. That's pretty extreme. I wouldn't, you would never play like that, but just to build up tongue strength. Um, so, yeah, I'll do Jerome Callet, the, uh, I guess the inventor of this method, kind of has, um, he has a spit buzz thing he likes to do. So, this is just to practice having the airstream come over the tongue and having the tongue stay forward, not having this. Alright, the tongue, the tongue is out of the picture. Um, the tongue is the embouchure in this. So you can see I'm bunched up here. My bottom lip and tongue are together. Okay, so now I'm just going to try putting that on the trumpet. So I'll do some normal tonguing for you. And you can actually hear the pitch falls so slightly. Um, even in really good players, they are compensating with air pressure. Lots of air pressure so the pitch won't fall. In this method, now I'll exhale and breathe in a little through my nose. So the pitch isn't really falling. That last one was pretty blasty. But the pitch isn't really falling. Um, the only time the pitch will fall with this is if your tongue is either not used to uh, this or getting tired from this. Um, and granted, mine isn't used to this. I've been doing this about a week. Uh, and I'm still still struggling a little bit with keeping the tongue forward all the time. Um, especially during my marching band practice, but uh, it's going very well. So, as you can see, with almost no air, I've got a ton of volume. Um, 
So if I want to take in a big breath, I can last, oh, twice as long as traditional tonguing, I guess. Um, so this style of tonguing is a tonguing that Arvind describes in great detail in the text in his book uh, that people often misinterpret. Gordon Goodwin, um, is it Gordon? No, it's Goldman. Edwin Goldman um, has some notes in here correcting Arvind saying uh, to do the traditional ta -ta -ta style of tonguing, which is just, it's just not good. The tongue is a much stronger muscle. If you can involve your tongue in your armature, you must. Um, even even for flute players, uh, Jerome Kellett has some instructions with flute players that are just, just incredible. Um, okay, so now I'm going to play the music using this, just naturally exhaling with a small amount of air. These are the first notes I've played today. I the only thing I spit buzzed about a couple minutes before this bit video. <laughs> there may be five minutes or so, um, but I didn't play any notes. So the first notes you're the ones you heard me doing in the video. So with this embouchure, it is actually much more difficult to free spit buzz um, than to do it with the mouthpiece. So. Because the the natural natural pressure of the mouthpiece, so the air doesn't escape, will help you know the mouthpiece and the tongue. And the bottom lip kind of form this one thing, and the top lip, your vibrate, is just vibrating, and then the air is totally controlled. <laughs> by the tongue. Um, so that's the tongue controlled embouchure. It's something I've been doing for about a week. I have had great success in my marching band playing really, really loud, really, really high. Um, my range has actually gone down a little bit doing this. Just because my embouchure is not, my embouchure is overcompensating. I keep pinching off the sound at the extreme uh, um, ends of my range. But what I, until my tongue gets tired after about an hour of wailing, blasting, um, it, it's so much more accurate and loud. It's just easy to play loud. It takes no air. Um, so this is what we want to do. Um, with the spit buzzing, spit buzz and put it on the trumpet or on the instrument. And then what you want to do is, uh, when it's on the instrument, don't worry about volume. Just get the tongue forward in the right position and then you can start adjusting the airflow once that is right you don't however it comes naturally to keep that tongue and the bottom lip together just do that volume for brass instruments it's probably going to be very very loud um, and then work on getting it quieter and then try to place buzz some melodies and play some melodies. Alright, thank you. Tongue controlled embouchure.